Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of E.W. Jackson for America. Great to be with you on today live. Uh, yesterday, we re-aired uh, my Easter message. I hope you got something out of that. And I'm going to be on <clears throat> live as often as I can when I'm traveling. It's a little bit harder. We're trying to work that out. But we are going to, we're going to figure out something. It's a little bit difficult because when I'm traveling, I'm often speaking multiple times. It's just, it's just difficult for me to do this and speak multiple times as well. Usually when I'm in my own home studio, it means I don't have any other place to go, any other speaking engagements to do. And so I'm free to be on twice in the day, in the morning here on EW Jackson for America, and then at 1 p.m. Eastern time for The Awakening on American Family Radio. Um, first of all, let me just say, folks, that we are doing everything in our power to, um, let me see if I can make a little adjustment here. Where, oh, here we go. <laughs> um, see, you are getting real, you are getting real television in real time. There you go. That's a little bit better. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I was right up on the screen, sitting up too high. Uh, look. We built this studio, the studio I'm in, uh, really just it, it sort of took things to a whole new level to be able to do this, but we're not done. We're not done. Um, there's things that I cannot do in the studio. One of the things, for example, for example, that I, I do in the studio is I kind of manage my own uh, technical needs, so to speak. I think I told you I'm bringing people in who will remotely take care of all the studio stuff for me. So all I have to do is sit down and they will take care of everything else. They will, they, everything else will be operated by someone else who is there looking objectively at what we're doing. So it's going to add a whole new dimension. But in order to do that, uh, I've got to refurbish the studio. I'm, I'm going to be getting new cameras, um, new control board. Uh, there's going to be a lot of technology that allows us to do this remotely. When I do a television interview, it is going to be um, top TV quality. And, and, and right now, we're doing pretty well right now. I mean, most people watching probably can't tell the difference, but a major network can because they know what they're looking for. Uh, but we want to uh, we're, we're going to redo the studio so that Fox News or anybody else look at our system and say, wow, it's, it's top of the line. Um, it's, I used to say this, we, we have a state-of-the-art studio. Well, it's not quite state-of-the-art yet, I found out talking to some experts. There's some things that we need to do in order to make that work. But we're going to get those things done. Well, folks, those things are going to cost me uh, somewhere in the vicinity of about uh, $36,000. Uh, $37,000 to be exact, about $37,000. I've already paid about $12,000 of that. So that tells you right there, I've got about 20, what, $24,000 I've got left to pay. $24,000 left to pay. As I've said before, all the stuff that we do, it costs us. It costs us. And I want to ask you, you again for your support i mean the money you send in is not coming to me it's not it's being used to to do all this stuff that we do okay of course i got a staff that has to be paid and that includes me but uh, what we're trying to do is advance the cause okay now uh we've got a big dinner coming up on may the 16th i've asked for your support for that it, it is the Stand Awards Dinner. We are honoring Dr. Alveda King, uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Allen West, uh, former Congresswoman and former Congressman uh, Allen West, uh, former Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, now Dean of the Robertson School of Government at Regent University, and Andrew Womack, founder of Andrew Womack Ministries. Uh, we are honoring these folks giving them the George Washington Award for taking a stand. Because these are people who have put themselves on the line for this country. 
And they really don't have to because many people in their position, many people who have achieved what they've achieved, they're not touching with a 10-foot pole because they figure, I don't want to make enemies. I don't want to offend people. I don't want to lose support. So I'm not, I'm not getting into any of those controversies. And you, we could name the ministries, big ministries that won't, won't touch these things with a 10-foot pole. Or if they do, they side with the left rather than with God, rather than with the Bible. They side with the left. They are, they are basically, in my view, wolves in sheep's clothing. But not these honorees, not the people that we've honored. These, these are folks who have been willing to stand up. And so we're giving them the George Washington Award for taking a stand. That's going to happen on May the 16th at 7 p.m. at the Tyson's Corner Marriott. Tickets are $150. You can find out about tickets and sponsorships at standamerica.us. That's standamerica.us. And we're asking for your help, your support. Now, you may say, well, Bishop, I, I, I'm, I'm out of town. There's no way I can make it. Well, then buy a ticket or just send a donation. Or you may say, uh, well, I'd like to support it, but there's no way I can get there. But maybe you're in a position to sponsor a table. The sponsorships begin at uh, $1,500 for the Patrick Henry sponsorship and go all the way up to $25,000 for the George Washington sponsorship. And we're asking you to be a sponsor. So go to the website, standamerica.us, click on the, the awards dinner, and you can see where you can be of help. Because we're doing everything in our power to advance the cause. Uh, in this program, for example, I want to be able to have guests on the program. Well, I, I just can't do that. I, I, not by myself. It just, it just won't work. I've, I've got to have support. And so this group I'm bringing in that's going to refurbish the studio and, uh, and enhance it uh, and then be able to control it remotely and sort of be my producers behind the scenes. Uh, you won't be able to see them, obviously, because they'll be handling everything. They'll have the studio hooked up so they can control everything remotely. Uh, but it costs money to do all this stuff, but it's, it's critically important. Uh, we've got contributions, your support, so we have the resources to do the things that we are doing. So please, Go to our website, standamerica.us, and continue to support the work that we're doing. Let me just tell you what drives me, because it's certainly not money. I am driven by my desire to glorify God and save this country. We boiled several years ago, we boiled our church mission down to three things. Save souls, save families, save the nation. Save the nation. That's what my life is dedicated to. Saving souls, saving families, saving the nation. That's why I preach the gospel. That's why I do this program. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your help. And by the way, don't forget, if you sign up, if you say, well, Bishop, that's a little rich for me. I can't do that, but I want to help. Sign up as a Patriot partner for a minimum of $25 a month, and I will send you a, a free signed and numbered copy of my book, Sweet Land of Liberty, Reflections of a Patriot Descended from Slaves. Um, you know, this book was endorsed by Alveda King, by Andrew Womack, by Lieutenant Governor uh, Oliver North, and a host of other people. Um, by uh, General Jerry Boykin, by Sandy Rios, um, by former Congressman Bob McEwen, by David Barton, by scholar and uh, gospel apologeticist Alex McFarlane, but uh, James Robinson uh, taped his program last week, but James Robinson it, that's going to air in four to six weeks. I'll keep you posted when it's going to air. He and his wife read the book, and they said to their audience, their vast audience, which is, of course, they're, they're watched around the world, said every American ought to read this book. That's what he said. I, of course, I want that too, but just it was wonderful for somebody who's read the book, he and his wife had read the book, to say every American ought to read this book. Because it's not a scholarly work, 
although there is a lot of research and, and whatnot in it. It's in part biographical, but it's not really just a book about me. It's, I, I do tell my story because I really believe that my story is part of the American story and really brings into focus why America is such a wonderful country. And as a black American, American of African ancestry, American whose ancestors were slaves, I bring a perspective of gratitude. But I explain that. I don't just say, oh, we ought to be grateful. Now, I explain how I reason through this and how I come to the conclusions I come to about the nature of this country help me to get it out there. Um, sign up as a Patriot partner. Go to standamerica.us for a minimum of 25. Kill innocent people. And by the way, he worked there. So these were his colleagues. So and what kind of person wants to, what, what's, what sick, twisted thinking has a person descended into that makes them want to kill their colleagues and maybe their friends and record it for posterity. So every, so we want, we want everybody to see the carnage that I create. I left a note to his parents saying he was going to attack his bank. And they want to focus on the instrument that he used. Lord have mercy. Talk about some misplaced energy and attention. We need to be focusing on what in the world are we doing in this country that is producing these people who are, are nihilists and fatalists and uh, just, they're, they're, they're just, they're just morally and spiritually empty. They're zombies. What are we doing to leave such a spiritual vacuum in people's lives? that they feel this is some kind of way of, of getting the attention, screaming at the country, uh, and, 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 and expressing their pain. Well, I really believe I know what it is. I know what's producing it. It, it is the headlong dive into godlessness. It is the headlong dive into godlessness. The nihilism. The, the utter fatalism, as I said, forgive me for being repetitious, but there really is just such a sense of utter despair in some people. And this guy showed, apparently, uh, as far as we know, showed no evidence of mental illness. Nobody at his job was ex ready for this. Uh, here again, we'll, maybe we'll learn more. But nobody saw any signs that this is a guy going to come in and try to kill us all. So it's clear that he, he was in touch with reality insofar as he was doing his job. He was going to work. He was taking care of his responsibilities. And apparently, I mean, the guy had a master's degree. Folks, we need God back in America. And the Democrat Party and the left, and people keep saying the far left, the extreme left. No, it's the entire left. They're, just forget about describing them as extremists. They're all extremists. They're all extremists because they now hold views that are only not viewed as, extre as extreme because the mainstream media, the corporate world, the entertainment culture have been indoctrinated to believe the same thing they believe. And they are basically trying to alter reality and our perception of it to make their weird, bizarre, distorted views normal and to make our views, as AOC and others would describe, we're fascists, we're extremists. So let me get this straight. Was I a fascist 40 years ago, 30 years ago, when I believed that marriage was a union between one man and one woman? Was that, that, was that fascism? Apparently it was, I just know, but uh, nobody knew it. When I was pro-life 40 years ago, because I believed that a, a child is sacred and 
and should be protected? Was I being a fascist, an extremist? Apparently, yes. Yeah, I just, but, we, but nobody knew it then, you see, because the left had not refined their vocabulary and, and developed their demagoguery and indoctrination to the point where they could redefine normal people as abnormal and make abnormal people normal. You realize it, it, the way they think, if you are a heterosexual, you are by definition an oppressor, which means that you're evil, you're a villain. But if you're a homosexual, gender confused, non-binary, whatever, 156, 35, 100 genders they come up with, if you, that's perfectly normal. That's perfectly good. Good. You are a good person. You are to be admired. But if you're a heterosexual, whoa, you are under suspicion. You are under a cloud. And again, this is what I want to ultimately get to. There is an all-out war declared on Christianity. Now, folks, let me say this one more time. I will never tire of saying it. I hope the day will come when I won't have to say it. But let me say it one more time. You Christians, particularly you black Christians, who are following this godless, amoral, demonic, anti-Christian Democrat party, you are in rebellion against Almighty God and the Jesus you came claim to be following. Because you cannot be a part of a party that has decided that it is going to push operating on kids, cutting off their genitalia, cutting off their breasts. I mean, the president of the United States says he supports this, injecting hormones into children showing them pornographic sexual material. That's what the Democrat Party now supports. You can't tell me that you're a Christian and you vote for these people and you support this stuff. I'm not going to, I don't want to hear it. You're lying to yourself and you're lying to me. Now it's just time to pull the Band-Aid off here. We've got a bunch of black pastors and black Christians, black churchgoers who are not Christians in many cases. They just don't know God. They know a cultural religion they call Christianity, but it's really all about race. It's not about righteousness. It's not about the righteousness of God. Because if it were, you would come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing so that he would receive you. But you're happy touching the unclean thing because you're one of them. And we got a bunch of so-called Christian pastors who are leading people to hell. They really work for the devil and they're claiming to work for God. And they're supporting things that the Bible makes clear are supremely evil and are an abomination to God. The state of Oregon just passed a law that excludes Christians from adopting children. It doesn't say Christians can't, but in order to adopt children, you must affirm their sexual orientation, their gender identity, their gender confusion, um, all, all of this godless, demonic stuff, in order to adopt children in Oregon, you must affirm that, which means that since a, a true Christian can't, a true Christian can't adopt. So basically, without having to say it, they've said basically, we're excluding Christians from the adoption process because we don't want them teaching children faith in God and teaching children that the Bible is true. We don't want them telling children that homosexuality is sin. We don't want them, tell, them telling children that God made male and female and those are the only two genders and there is nothing else. We don't want them doing that. And so we're going to exclude them from adopting children. Of course, I'm not even sure why they went that far because they're killing them before they're born anyway. 
I mean, that's that's really their that's their first stop. Kill them before they're born. But those who manage to get through the gauntlet to avoid being injected with saline solution to avoid having their bodies ripped apart in their mother's womb to avoid avoid being discarded like like so much flotsam and jetsam trash. Those who manage to avoid that and are actually born, we're going to make sure that if you don't have biological parents to take care of you, you certainly won't land in a Christian home. We'll put you in a home with two drag queens and three non-binaries and two homosexuals that happy to do that. And they'll all be, they can all be married with that. No problem with that. But a husband and wife, mother and father who are Christians and believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and follow the word of God. Oh no, we're not putting children into that, that horrific environment. Christians are going to have to just make up our minds. We are in a war. I'm not talking about a shooting war, folks. We are in a, uh, and it's a very serious war. And we are the targets. We're not the aggressors. We're the defenders. Because we're the, we're being targeted. And in Loudoun County, in Loudoun County, a teacher is under threat of being fired. You know why? Because the teacher has on the signature of her email, John 316. And they told her, you can't have that on your emails. Now, you can put your pronouns on your emails. And you can put all kinds of sick sexual mess on your emails. Because that's okay. But John 316. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, no, that is forbidden. The Democrat Party hates God. Let me say it again to all you black, Hispanic, Christians of whatever background, European, African, South American, Indian, Asian, Whatever background, whatever ancestral background you might have, whatever the complexion of your skin, let me say this to Christians. The Democrat Party hates God. They hate Christianity. Oh, well, I know Democrats who are Christians. You know Democrats who claim to be Christians, but they will be Christians who reject the truth of God's word. And let me say to all you prominent prognosticators and spokespeople on Fox, on Newsmax, wherever. You better stop playing mealy mouth and patty cake with this stuff. You better stop having these gender confused people on and acting like there's some kind of icon that you can talk to because they may share your view. We got to stop promoting homosexuality because it is accepting homosexuality as normal that got us to the point we're at now. It is undeniable. And people want to slice and dice it. God told you what to do. God said it's sin. It's an abomination. You don't accept it. It doesn't mean you don't love those people. It doesn't mean you don't treat them with respect and dignity. But the behavior itself is wrong and it should never in any way be sanctioned never in any way have the imprimatur of government or anything else put on it. When the Supreme Court made the decision to Obergefell, they were wrong, just as wrong as they could be. The five justices who voted for it and declared that same-sex marriage was somehow a constitutional right. It's not, because it's not right. It's not a constitutional right. It's not a moral right. It's, it's, it, is, it does not exist. Now, people can do whatever they want to do. But what they don't have is the right to demand that our government, that our institutions bow to that evil. Because that's what it is. It is evil. Yeah, let me say it again. It is evil. That's not according to Bishop Jackson's opinion. Don't get mad at me. It is according to the scripture. And while we live in the age of grace and we love people and pray for people, 
and forgive people and try to get people delivered. We're not hurting people. We're not killing people. Under the old covenant, the law, the schoolmaster was, that was leading people to Christ because it was showing people the need for grace because sin was punishable by death. God told them in the old covenant, you, you stone those people because you put evil away from you. I'm not saying that to justify stoning. I'm saying that to show that the scripture calls it evil, not Bishop Jackson. I don't have an opinion about this stuff. I have the word of God and what the word of God says about it. That's it. So your problem, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, your problem's not with me. Your problem's with the Bible. Your problem is really with God. Your problem is with Jesus Christ. You said at the beginning, God made them male and female, period. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. The Greek word there means woman, his, the, the woman who he makes his wife. There's no marriage between the two men, two women. It's not Bishop Jackson's opinion. It's what the word of God says. Now, like I said, we got a lot of things we could talk about. But I, 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 folks, this stuff just continues to jump out at me because I really believe that we are at a point of great danger to the Christian community because I really believe this. I, I wish I were wrong, but I really believe this. I think we're going to see more violence against Christians, more violence against churches, more violence against, against crisis pregnancy counseling centers because the left has decided, which is something I've been saying for years, that the last enemy is the, is the Bible-believing, the evangelical Christian church that is standing fast on the word of God. We are the last enemy. If they can get rid of us, if they can silence us, if they can stop us, they can take the whole culture. They've almost got it now, but they don't have me. They don't have you, but they've almost got it now. They got the corporate world. They got the entertainment world. They got the military. They've got, what else is there? They certainly got government under this Biden administration. They've had that for a long time because Obama, you know, just, just basically just was a big homosexual booster. He, he, he loved, I mean, he just loved it. I'm not making it up. I mean, he said so. He, he just loved them. But he said we ought to admire homosexuality. So he's just, he's just in love with that stuff. So they've pretty much taken over the culture. But they don't have you, and they don't have me, and they don't have the true Bible-believing churches. Now I want to ask my fellow Americans of African ancestry in these churches all over the world, all over this country, come out from among them. If you got a pastor who won't speak up against this stuff because he's beholden to some hack Democrat politician, then you, you basically, you're in a church that is led by an Ahab and a Jezebel. And you better get out of there. If you got a pastor who's saddling up to these Democrats in their godless idolatrous policies that are God-hating. They are anti-Christ policies. If you got a pastor who sides up with that and is all schmoozy and lovey-dovey with all these godless Democrat politicians, you have an Ahab and a Jezebel as a pastor and a, and a first lady. You need to get out of that mess and go somewhere where the word of God is proclaimed without apology I'm not talking about going to a church that's Republican. I'm talking about going to a church that is not willing to submit itself to godless idolatry. I told you, I'm not beholden to a party. I'm beholden to, G I'm beholden to Jesus. I agree with the party when it agrees with me. And when it doesn't agree with me, I'm done. I don't care what the name of it is. And this, this, this religious cult-like devotion to a party 
that is basically shaking its fist at Almighty God and then running into church. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know what? God says these people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Because if your hearts were with him, you would look at that mess and say, I'm not going to be a part of that. I can't be. I cannot be. I love Jesus. And these people, these people clearly hate him. You can't be Jesus' enemy and be my friend. It doesn't work that way because he is first in my life and I owe him my first loyalty. And if you are against him, you are against me and I am against you, period. Can't put a scripture on your, your, your signature on your email because oh that's separation of church and state now what they're really telling you is we hate god and we don't want anybody reminding us of him or what he stands for or what his word says we don't want to even see it we don't want it we don't want it put in our faces at all but oh drag queens homosexuals gender confused oh yeah that oh bring that on yeah we we want we want to see pictures of homosexual acts we want to show that to elementary school children because we're really good people but you people quoting the scripture oh you're the you're the bad dangerous people we got to get rid of we got to silence you we got to shut you down see just as i'm going to end with this just as there's no such thing you can't have, put it this way you can't have indoctrination without censorship Right? Because you've got to silence all the counter voices. You can't have a cultural revolution based upon godlessness and atheism and sexual idolatry and immorality and allow the church to thrive too. Because the church will ultimately be the antidote to all of that lying poison. So you've got to stop the church from being heard, seen, felt. So that people aren't hearing the contradictory message, which is that sin and it'll take you to hell. But the love of God is available to you to deliver you out of that mess. So that you can be secure in this life and have security in eternal life with Jesus Christ as well. God bless you, folks. I know there are a lot of issues I could talk about. I could talk about China and Taiwan. I hope to get to that as well. And I, I could talk about um, the Congress having hearings in New York. I'm going to get to that on crime. I could talk about this bogus indictment of a former president by this George Soros slave, Alvin Bragg, but I, the, today, the Lord wanted me to share with you the importance of, uh, once again, we are under attack as Christians. We've got to stand up boldly for the things of God without apology, without equivocation, and not be intimidated in, in, in any way. And if we will do that, we will carry the day. We will carry the day. That's going to do it, folks. God bless each and every one of you. I love you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And remember to stand up, step up, speak up, refuse to back up, because we cannot be defeated if we will not quit. Because we are on God's side. Looks like my outro doesn't want to work today. See, that's what I mean. <laughs> we'll get it together.